Ubuntu version 11.4 is due to be released sometime at the end of this month, and I'm going to here as quickly as I can walk through the new Unity interface and point out all the mostly small things that I think need to change before it gets released, or hopefully at least soon after it gets released. So here's a screenshot of Unity running from a build I think dated April 6th. So this is very recent. The windowing theme, that is the general look of the fonts and the, the borders around the windows, is basically unchanged uh, since 10.10. .10. And also what you see in the top right, all of those panel icons are basically unchanged since 10.10. .10. But what's new here, quite obviously, is the big new launcher on the left, which has actually now supplanted both the old window switcher that would go at the bottom of the screen, and also the Applications Places System uh, menu that used to sit in the top left. Aside from the new launcher, the other major change is that application menus, the traditional file edit application menu, no longer appears on each individual window. You select an active window and then it appears in the top bar. Pretty much just like in Mac OS X. I'm going to talk about that later. First though, I want to focus on just the launcher. So the striking thing about the launcher is that it makes Ubuntu now very much like Windows 7 with its new taskbar that itself imitated the uh, Mac OS X style dock. Though actually I personally prefer the Windows 7 style to the Mac OS X dock. So in general, I'm quite pleased with this change, and in fact, on my own Windows 7 system, when I run Windows 7, I always place the taskbar on the left side, so this is very familiar to me. In fact, if you were to take all those panel icons in the top right and place them down at the bottom of the launcher, the taskbar, uh, just like in Windows 7, and you got rid of that top bar entirely, what you'd end up with is something that looks and acts virtually just like Windows 7. In fact, I can kind of just sum up everything by saying that's actually what I think they should do. They should just take those few extra steps and go all the way and make this pretty much just like Windows 7. And as I'll go over, most of the ways in which this diverges from Windows 7 is for the most part inferior. And I wonder if the Unity team is willing to acknowledge how close this is to Windows 7 and if they're just resisting going that last mile just because, because of not invented here syndrome, basically. So the first big mistake with the launcher is that the launcher has this odd auto-hide behavior that's very confusing. By default, the launcher will only appear if there is no window overlapping that same area it occupies. So if I were to drag this Firefox window to the left such that it overlaps the launcher, the launcher would then hide itself. And then the only way I could get the launcher back is by moving the window away or by moving the mouse into the top left corner, and that exposes the, the launcher until I move the mouse out into the right, and then it'll auto-hide again after a short time. This is frankly really confusing, and in fact, when you maximize a window, maximized windows are considered to overlap that area. So anytime you have a maximized window, the only time you see the launcher is if you move the mouse up into the top left corner. To make things even more confusing, currently, this may be a bug, and it may be something they will fix in a few weeks, but currently, as you move your mouse over the Ubuntu logo in the top left, and as you inch towards the left corner, the menu will start peeking out. Each, each pixel you move towards the left corner, the launcher will peek out just another pixel, but you have to go all the way into the top left corner before the launcher is fully, fully exposed. If you move the mouse away as it starts peeking out, it's considered not exposed, and it's just, it'll just hide immediately as you move down, as you move the mouse down to try and click on something. That's really frustrating and weird. So at the very least, they need to fix that. Also, this is simply confusing because for a long time, I couldn't tell if I was supposed to click that Ubuntu button in the top left. And actually, you're not supposed to because clicking that Ubuntu button, that's actually the equivalent of the start menu in Windows. You click that and it exposes the uh, start menu, as we'll discuss in a minute. So right off the bat with Unity, you get confused because the launcher is exhibiting this very weird auto-hide behavior. Many people have suggested that the launcher should be exposed not just by mousing into the top left corner, but also just anywhere on the left edge. And that would be a help, but I would go even further and say just by default, absolutely what should happen by the time Ubuntu gets released, that launcher should just always be visible. It shouldn't have any auto-hide behavior. If some users prefer that for whatever reason, maybe they just for aesthetic reasons or they have a small screen like on a netbook thingy, well, that should be something they should have to configure. But by default, it absolutely should be just always visible. Right now, in fact, in the standard configuration menu, there is no option to always expose the launcher. However, there's a program for configuring Compass that you can install that you can use to configure Unity and have that always be fixed in place. Another oddity with the launcher is what they did to cope with the problem of scale, where when you open too many programs and therefore they no longer all fit in the space. What they do is pretty clever. You'll see when you have too many icons that the excess icons get displayed sort of skewed three-dimensionally such that they're tilted back and they get stacked at the bottom and you mouse over that stack and it expands. 
and you can click on them. That's pretty clever. It has a few problems. For one, when you hover over the thing at the bottom, you expect them all to expand such that you can see the bottom most. But the way they have it expand, it expands such that it expands downwards rather than upwards. And so you have to then scroll the whole list by clicking and dragging the launcher and you can you can click click and drag up and down to move the the row of icons to drag it up and down a weird thing about this solution though is that you can actually click and drag to slide the icons of the launcher up and down at any time like say here in the screenshot even though i don't have an excess number of icons there i can still slide them up and down for no effect basically I, you slide them up and then you let go and they just spring back into place it's kind of weird. I, for a long time, I was wondering what the hell is that for? And it turns out the reason it does that is because if you want to rearrange the order of the icons, like you can in the Windows 7 taskbar, to do that, you have to click and drag an icon outwards, that is to the right, and then find a position for it and drop it back into place. And then also, there, see that trash can down at the bottom that's always in that fixed space there? You click that and obviously it opens your recycling bin, your trash, trash can, but also that's the only way you can delete these. Well, you can delete them by right-clicking and effectively unpinning them from the launcher, or you can drag them out and then drag them onto that trash can. Quick aside, I think that trash can's kind of silly. I just don't think people need to look at their trash can that frequently that the trash can necessitates a privileged position on the launcher. That's kind of weird to me. Yeah, in any case, the solution they have for scaling in the case of uh, excess icons, it's not terrible. And actually, I'd say it's, it's probably better than what they have in Windows 7. In Windows 7, when you have too many icons, you then have a little arrows down at the bottom. That you effectively flip through pages of icons on the taskbar, and that's no good because it's modal. I seriously wonder if the best solution to this problem of excess icons is just to have a special icon down at the bottom, which you click, that expands out effectively a second row temporarily. And although their current design is probably just fine, maybe all I would do is that when you do slide it up and down, they would just always display a little message down somewhere, a little overlay somewhere that it telling you what the hell is happening because it's a bit hard to figure out. Just some sort of floating overlay with a message and a checkbox that you can uncheck so that it doesn't show up again. Well, actually, there is one way I would change the launcher, and that is I would simply take those panel icons on the top right and put them down at the bottom of the launcher, just like in the Windows 7 taskbar, effectively a notification area with a time and date displayed, so that we can simply get rid of that top bar. Because as I'll get into, that top bar really just should disappear, basically. It shouldn't be there. Right now, though, let's look at the Start menu, or what they call the Dash. I guess is in, like, Dashboard. So on your keyboard, you hit the Windows key, or what they call the Super key, or you click on the Ubuntu icon in the top left, and this is what you'll see. In basic concept, it's very similar to the start menu as it was introduced in Windows uh, Vista with the search box that you can type in that I really love. But I have to say, um, I really don't have too much to complain about here. I think they did a very nice job. In particular, it's smart how they put the search box at the top, whereas in Windows Vista, if you place the taskbar on the left side of the screen and you open the start menu, then the, the search box appears down at the bottom, and that's not a good place for it in that orientation. So it's I like having it up here at the top. And also, I really like how they realized, you know, the start menu, why does it have to be small? It doesn't have to be small. It doesn't have to hide in its corner uh, of the screen. We can just make it big. And so they have very generous mousing targets here. And they very smartly have whittled this down to very few selection choices, which is good, especially for novice users. I'm not so sure exactly what's going on with those four icons on the bottom. How are those selected? They're not the most recent programs. They seem to just be like four of the most common tasks, I guess, as they determined by user testing, perhaps. I don't know if those things can be customized. They don't really bother me. I just find it a bit odd. One thing I do not like here, though, is the little thing that says shortcuts with the home icon next to it and the down arrow. What that does is if you click that, it toggles the dash menu here such that all of those eight big icons, effectively, that area disappears. So you can hide or reveal that area. That's what clicking that shortcuts thing does. I would just get rid of that entirely, but if you're going to keep it, you need to change that icon because just, just make it that damn little arrow because calling it shortcuts, that's just weird. What does that mean? Those are shortcuts? I don't think so. It's just confusing semantically what, what that's supposed to convey. And I have no idea why there's that home icon. That's confusing because it suggests something to do with your home folder, but it has nothing to do with that. So I don't know what's going on there. I also don't really like, in the bottom right of the dash, you'll see there's a little uh, white window-like icon you can click, and that'll expand the dash so that it fills up the whole screen. 
I guess it's pretty harmless and you can just ignore it if you don't want to use it, but I just find it weird. For one, when you click that thing, it's going to make the icons sort of resort as, you know, that what happens with icons when you lay them out in two dimensions, as soon as you resize the area, then they have to get resorted. And I think that's always confusing. But in general, just kind of averse to the idea that we should always make things resizable, because I think, you know, you should have the system intelligently fit things to the space such that the designer has to decide how big something needs to be. I guess I should be grateful that this uh, expansion button is actually a toggle. You don't drag out the dash to resize it, you just click it and it expands to the full size. So that at least I'm grateful for. Again, not a big deal, but it just kind of bugs me. Ah, uh, this actually reminds me about one more thing I don't like about the launcher, and that is that, uh, see the more apps and find files icons here? Those icons actually appear at the bottom of the program list on the launcher, and they're always fixed there and you can't remove them. I don't see any point in this. If expert users need a really quick way to get at these icons and they don't want to have to open the dash and then click one of these two, then just make them use a keyboard shortcut. You know, adding just something they can click on the launcher is weird. And also it's just, I think, a bit confusing to new users of why are these things, why do you have these special cases here on the launcher? Special cases like this always require, I think, a great deal of justification and I just don't see it here. I mean, it's right there in the dash, so how much trouble could people have clicking twice rather than once? And while we're at it, actually, there's one more thing here in the launcher which I think needs to go, at least by default. And that's third from the bottom, not including the trash can, third from the bottom is the icon for the workspace switcher. When you click that icon, uh, your whole desktop zooms backwards, as if like you're zooming out from it, and you see uh, your other workspaces which you can switch to. It's pretty much the window switching, just like you've seen in Compass in the last uh, four years. And it's quite well done. You can drag windows in this view. You can drag them from one workspace to the other. So it's nice for organizing. But, and I say this not just as a person who, you know, uses a computer very heavily and doesn't use workspaces and really doesn't like them. I say this as someone who tries to teach computers, basic computer usage to novice users and people without a lot of experience. I think just having workspaces available by default is just a really, really terrible idea. You don't want to put that button there so that people who don't know what they're doing are going to accidentally click it and they're going to be wondering what the fuck is going on. There's just no reason this needs to be there by default. If people want to use it, fine. Just make it an option, put it in the program menu, you can simply add it to the taskbar yourself. But otherwise, there's no reason it needs to be there. There are plenty of people who have used computers for years and they successfully use a web browser and they still don't understand the concept of I open a web browser program and inside that program I have my tabs and those tabs display web pages. They don't understand that concept and you want to add a third level that says, okay, my programs are in Windows and those windows exist in workspaces. So you have your web pages in your tabs, your tabs in your web browser windows, your web browser windows in a workspace. That's what you want to do. That's, that's crazy. And aside from the whole comprehension issue, I think it's just most people just don't like using workspaces or they just don't have any need to do so because they have very few windows open and they're just not in the habit of that workflow. In any case, getting back to the dash, when you click on the find apps button, for example, this is what you see. You see three rows at the top there, frequently used programs and then the middle installed programs. And then at the bottom, uh, apps available for download. Again, I generally like this. Um, I like how everything's nice and big and very readable and well spaced. I'm not so sure about making the available for download apps so prominent. I think maybe you need to s separate them visually somehow. The objection here is that for most computer users, their experiences, they're overwhelmed by all the options that already exist on their systems and say all the, f the files and folders they already have and all the programs they already have that you know, trying to throw more stuff at them just makes them less happy. But another reason to object here is that while the software repositories, the Ubuntu store and Synaptic, they're, they're, all, they're getting a lot better and they're more friendly than they were just a few years ago. But you still see in this list, you still see a whole bunch of apps that, you know, most people have no idea what the hell they're for. I mean, there's no description given there. And in the long tradition of Unix, a lot of these programs you see have crappy names that are totally meaningless to most people with funny spellings and extra letters tapped on, tacked on the front. Why do all these things have K's and G's in front? So I'd prefer if by default, there were at least some very restrictive filtering of these suggested apps, you know, filter it down to a selection of apps that have been shown to be actually desired by casual users. And it, you know, you can have an option for uh, advanced users that they want to see more suggestions perhaps, but but just in the spirit of getting rid of clutter and hiding unfriendly things that are meaningless to most users, hiding that stuff out of their sight, I think that uh, bottom bar down there needs a, needs a second thought. 
Uh, another thing I don't like here is that you have to click next to installed. You have to click C74 more results to see the full list of applications. I'd rather they just take that middle section and fully expand it so, such that this dash would then take up the whole height of the screen and you just have that middle section which you can scroll through. You would probably just leave the frequently used uh, icons at the top as is, though maybe just take that uh, expansion button and make it a bigger full-sized icon off on the right side. I just think that expansion button needs to be a bigger target and it just makes more sense to me on the right side of the list, at the end of the list. Oh, and one last thing here where it says all applications in the top right. Um, that's a pull down menu you can click and you select a filter on what applications you see. Like say you can select the category of games and we're seeing right now the default all applications category. I like what they do better in GNOME 3 where instead of a pull down menu, they have that just off to the side as just a, a list written out it seems more obvious. It's kind of hidden up there. It's not so obvious it's a button. If you want to keep that pull down, just make it more obvious it's a button and make it maybe a, bitter, a little bit bigger as a mousing target. Also, when you open it up, the, the items in the list are just a bit too small. They need to be bigger. I think the reason they have it as this pull down rather than use the GNOME 3 style is because they're trying to target Unity also for um, small devices like netbooks and possibly uh, touch touchscreen devices like uh, uh, tablets. So they stuff all those categories into this pull down in the dash so that the dash can fit in smaller spaces. I would say if that's really necessary, well then just have two options. On the desktop version though, you should have it as a list like in GNOME 3. Okay, we finally now get to the biggest problem area in Unity, which is the top bar and how Unity tries to give applications a global menu bar in the style of Mac OS. So here what you can see, I have this folder window open, my home folder, and I've maximized it, but notice how when maximized, the title bar of your maximized window becomes effectively the top bar of the screen where the panel icons go. So that top bar and your title bar get merged into one. You also notice here that we don't see any traditional menu bar. You don't see file edit anywhere. To get at the menu bar, what you do is you hover your mouse over the title of the window and it then changes into the menu bar. The first thing I don't like about this is that, especially as someone who is very fidgety with the mouse, I tend to just move the mouse cursor around when I'm not exactly sure what I'm about to do next. I don't like how, when I'm fidgeting with the mouse and the cursor's on the top left, how I'll constantly see the title bar and the menu flash in and out, flash back and forth. It's simply distracting, and as we'll see in some cases, it's just confusing. The next problem with this whole arrangement where the title bar of a maximized window gets integrated into that top bar is notice what happens here. We have a maximized Firefox window, but no window currently has a focus. So we don't have an active window now. What do we see? Well, we don't even see the title of that window of the Firefox window, nor do we even see its uh, close, minimize and maximize buttons. So this means to close a maximized window, you have to make it active first, then you'll see the X, which you can click. Worst of all, when I have a window active, which is not maximized, yet I have another maximized window, what I will see in the title bar is the title for that active window, not for the maximized window. So very confusingly, it looks like home folder should be the title of the Firefox window, the maximized window, but it's not. And now here, when I mouse over the title in the top bar, I see a menu bar, but it's not the menu bar for the maximized window, it's the menu bar for my active window, which is the, the, the folder window here. You'll also notice one oddity here, though I doubt this is deliberate design, it's probably just some bug or something that's going to get fixed by release. Uh, notice how the menu bar is weirdly uh, overlaid part of the title, that you see st still see part of the title poking through. This is not only ugly, it's really quite confusing. It took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on in, the, in this whole scheme. So the essence of the problem here is that they've taken the Mac OS X style global menu bar for all applications for all windows at the top, but at the same time, the designers have decided to be clever and integrate the title bar of the maximized window into that top bar where the menu goes. So you have this very ugly and weird behavior where you have to mouse over the title to see the current menu bar for the currently active window. Now, my, the solution I prefer here, and I think this is a preference of a lot of people, is I wish they would just ditch any attempt at having a global application menu. And they could keep then the integration of the uh, maximized title bar into the top bar, that would be fine then. 
Though actually my preferred preferred solution is to get rid of that top bar entirely and then integrate all the, the panel stuff into the launcher at the bottom, just like the Windows 7 notification area slash system tray. But assuming they're not willing to use either of those solutions, then what they need at the very least to do is just ditch this whole concept of integrating the title bar into the top bar. You can't have the global navigation menu and this integrated title bar business going on at the same time. They just make things too weird. You get that ugly flash where you have to hover over the title. And it's just ick. The other thing they need to do with these title bars, regardless of all that, is that all the windows and the title bar at the top where the menu goes, there needs to be an icon for the application. They really need to bring those back. If you look at GNOME 3, it looks very nice how they have the icon integrated into the title bar. Oh, I actually did have a third solution to this problem, and that is that you would have the title of the window become a button. And when you click this title, then the menu bar expands out as an overlay beneath it. Um, it would actually look very much like what you see in Firefox 4. You see in Firefox 4, the title is something you can click, and you see a menu that pops out. If you did that, then you actually could get away with an arrangement where the menu bar for the active window always appears in the top bar. You'd have in the top left um, the title for whatever's maximized, but then somewhere centered in a, in a big button, you'd have the, the button for the menu bar of the active window. So you can actually have two menu bars up there at once if you have the, if you use these title buttons. Well, actually here, I just made a quick crude mock-up of what this would look like. You'd have the, the Firefox button there in the top left because that's the maximized window. And then you have the uh, the home folder that is the, the active folder window there in the middle somewhere. And you'd probably make that one considerably bigger because I think kind of what they're trying to do by putting the uh, menu bar at the top is to make it a nice, easy uh, mousing target. So you can just throw your mouse up to the top and easily hit the menu. Yeah, so you'd have the title button slash menu button somewhere in the center there and considerably wider than what you see here. So it's a nice big target. Oh, and actually not seen here with this arrangement, you can add back in the close button and the minimize button next to the maximize windows title button slash menu bar. So I think that's actually a pretty neat solution though I'd really just go for ditching the whole top bar in the first place. Okay, now just a few more gripes. Quickly, one minor thing is I don't like how when you mount any drive, they, those drives automatically appear as icons in the launcher. I think, just like with a trash can, uh, that you can just leave that up to people finding in the file browser. I sort of understand the motivation because by default they put this home icon in the top so you only have by default the one link to folders but then you know you open the dash and right there there's a link to find folders so why not just having that find folders uh, you know add any mounted drives or just let people go to the file browser and simply look for it in the list. Now also notice what happens here when these two mounted drives is they appear on my desktop. And that leads to actually one of my biggest gripes is I think Unity, just like GNOME 3, needs to get rid of the desktop. The whole notion of the desktop as this quick access special directory, I think this is the long-standing dumbest idea in interface design for 20 years. It's, it's really something we should have ditched it at least 10 years ago. It's just a dumb, dumb idea. Expert users know it's just a bad way of organizing stuff and it's an inconvenient place to get at, so it's not really a convenient place to put things or to access things. Novice users are simply confused by it. And intermediate users, this is actually the biggest crime of all, intermediate users have, because of the desktop, have no conception of what the fuck is going on with files and folders. It's one of the biggest obstacles, especially as implemented in Windows. Um, it's one of the biggest obstacles to understanding what the hell is going on, because what does the desktop mean? It means that you have this thing, which is really a directory, on which appears your computer, the by computer icon, and other stuff. But your computer contains storage drives, which contains ultimately the desktop directory itself. So the desktop is this weird, twisted Mobius strip that contains itself. And so is it any surprise that most users, even those who, who've used computers for years and years, have no concept of how folders and files work? The desktop deliberately obfuscates the whole concept, and it's a convenience which is not convenient. It's, it's just a really terrible, awful thing. So hopefully, now that GNOME 3 has finally made the leap, um, Unity, after a while, will catch on and make the same decision. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So, like GNOME 3, Unity should get rid of the desktop, and also like GNOME 3, the last, last thing I'll mention, Unity should, at least by default, get rid of minimization. 
Now, I'm not saying that I myself never minimize things. I'm saying that I shouldn't be tempted by the option because it's never the right way of going about things. The reason I tend to minimize windows is because I want to get at the window behind whatever I have typically maximized. But that's dumb. We have a mechanism for switching between windows. It's called the taskbar or the launcher here. And you should just have one damn mechanism that fits all of your cases or alt tabbing. We we have a keyboard method for switching between windows as well. And you know, moving windows out of the way to get at the things underneath. I think it's just this, this ridiculous burden of meta work that just gets in the way of our thought process. So if we get rid of minimization very quickly, I think users will train themselves to not want it anymore. And they'll just reflexively always go to the same place. The, the launcher on the left to switch between their windows, or if they're using the keyboard, they'll use alt tab. Now, actually, if I had my way, and this is a whole other screencast, if I had my way, all windows would always be maximized with no option to demaximize windows. Basically, you wouldn't have any free floating windows. It sounds crazy and unworkable. It has issues of, well, what, wait a minute, what about applications that have little windows and what happens there? But again, that's a whole other discussion. And I realize that's not an argument I'm going to win anytime soon.